Hi there folks, it's Mike here, and we're going to continue on with our SDL2 series here. And we're going to talk about using SDL image so you can get more formats. So previously we've been able to look through the SDL 2.0 API by different categories. And if we go ahead and look at the different ways to create surfaces, and surfaces being how SDL loads in some pixel data and applies it to some essentially grid of pixels, we'll see that we have some options available. So for instance, loading a bitmap image. But as we may know, or you may know, there's lots of different images for file formats, JPEG, PNG, and so on. So how can we load those different formats? Well, the answer is we can use the SDL2 image library. So if you go ahead and do a search for SDL2 image, you'll find the documentation on the SDL page here about a library that allows us to load different image libraries. Essentially, what this library is doing is wrapping around some other popular libraries like libpng or libjpg. And instead of using those or having to load those one at a time, you can just access them through STL image 2.0. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is download this repository. So if you're on Windows, what you're going to want to do is download your files here or Mac and download the install and follow along. Since I'm on a Linux machine, I'm going to show you on Linux how we can do this. So uh, something that we can do is actually just search for our actual library. So we do app cache search and lib or how about just SDL2. We'll get a bunch of the SDL2 libraries and you'll see a huge list uh, here. Now we're typically interested in the dev libraries and you'll see lib SDL2 because it's important that we want version two and the dev library here. This is what I'm going to install with my installation. If you're using yum or some other uh, distribution or Pac-Man on Linux, you can do a similar search and hopefully find the libraries. Otherwise, you can build uh, from source. So I'm going to do app git install the library here. And if you get an error message like I did, that means you need uh, root privileges or to be a super user so that you can make installs here. Now I've already got the library installed, but as long as you have a version greater than two, you should be good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with loading uh, our image here. So what I've prepared here is a uh, version of our support code that we've been working on, and this will be in the repository as always. So just to recap what I've got here, and then we'll add an actual image, is we create a window here for SDL, make sure that we can initialize our systems, Finally, create our window, create a renderer, make sure it's hardware accelerated. And that's going to be using the window uh, surface that we created previously. And then we've got a main loop here for our application uh, that's going to run over and over and over again. Okay. So then the application will render a blue window, clear our render, and then we can draw our rendering uh, below here. And then we'll clean up our resources when the program's finished. So we can go ahead and compile this on our machine. And let's go ahead and just make sure that this much of the support code works here. And I'll bring in here's my SDL. So now wouldn't it look nice if we were able to draw an image here? Again, that's our goal using the SDL2 library. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is take a look here at some of the uh, documentation for uh, SDL2. And that's available at this link here. So now that I've got the library installed, well, I need to be able to link it in to my program as well as include the library here. So let's see if we can get a sense of that using the SDL documentation and learn how to do that. I'm going to go ahead and click on the frame documentation here just so we can see everything. A little bit of an overview here, and you'll see that this version here uh, has for SDL uh, 1.2 here that's listed, and it's giving some description of the different file formats that can be used here. So JPEG, PNG, uh, and the uh, TIFF format. All right, so getting started has some different uh, notes about different uh, images that you can use. And the includes that we're going to need, well, SDL underscore image. So let's at least start with that. So since I've installed this through my package manager, I should be able to get away with just SDL image 
.h, and let's go ahead and see if that gives a compile here. It says it can't find it. Well, on my Linux system, I have a hunch that it's probably in the SDL2 directory, like such. So let's go ahead and give it a compile, and we can, in fact, include that header. So depending on if you're using or following along on a Mac, you may be able to just use this path uh, here, or Windows, I believe it's the same, but on Linux, it's installing my SDL2 directory. Okay, so we've got our includes. Now, the next thing that we're going to have to do, looking at compiling, is to figure out some of our flags here. And we're going to need to link in the SDL image library here. So let's go ahead and try that. So this will be the link in SDL uh, image. Now we might have a little problem here, but let's let's see what happens here. Uh, link in SDL image. And it's going to say, can't find this library. Well, if we're following along this documentation, remember this is a little bit older. So we actually need SDL uh, 2 image here, and then it'll compile. So I'll make sure that's updated in our compile line here. So here it is if you need it on Linux. It'll be very similar on Mac or Windows that you'll need to link in this library. So now that we have the header file that says we have a bunch of these functions available and we have the actual implementation, which is in the pre-compiled library here, we're ready to start loading an image. So let's look at our documentation here and find some interesting things here. So in general, you can find out whatever the linked version is and get a little printout if you want. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and start off with initiating our system. And what this is going to do is set up the different image file formats that we want uh, to support. And let's just go ahead and work with one that's uh, familiar. How about uh, PNGs here? So uh, somewhere in my code before I actually want to use this, I'm going to use uh, IMG init and following the convention here and then pass in uh, one of the flags here. Okay, and it's just taking in an integer value. And I probably want to also check this uh, value here to make sure that it uh, works here. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, check the error code. I believe this follows the same convention as um, SDL here. And I believe it'll return a zero if this does not uh, take place. Uh, it'll get a return success here. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, set that up. You could also follow this example here. Now, if you want to support multiple different uh, types, uh, just to note that if you want to load JPEG, PNG, and uh, TIFF images, this is showing the flag for how to uh, initialize and support those different uh, formats. And because this is potentially using a uh, bit mask here, uh, actually, I'll, I'll refactor this a little bit just to follow their uh, example. This will make it uh, make a little bit more sense here. So have the flags here, the PNG format, and then we could just init the flags. And then we want to check basically if the initted flags here, uh, they're sort of separating this out into two lines, which is good, does not in fact match the flags uh, that were returned. So we'll sort of get uh, zeros and ones indicating if in fact we were able to initialize ng on the spit mask then we'll get a uh, error message and be able to figure out which of the formats were or were not loaded so let me go ahead and follow this i actually like this uh format so init uh status i'm going to change it up just a little bit img init the flags and then i can just check if the init status and take the uh, and of the flags, and if that's not equal to the flags themselves, there must have been some error. So that's always nice to have a little bit of uh, error handling. Here. Now I'll go ahead and print out a message: uh, SDL2 image format not available. Okay, and that'll do the trick here. Okay, one extra character here. There we are. Okay, so that's how to initialize the library and check if it was successful. Now, on the contrary or the opposite side, we can also quit when we are done. 
So before I forget to add that in, since this is a C-based library, we have to do the uh, manual destruction of our code here, like so. Okay, so let's go ahead and compile that, and we can see that it works. Okay, now that's all nice and well, but uh, we should actually load up an image here so that we can do something interesting. So let's go ahead and look at image load here. And it follows pretty much the same pattern that we've seen before, just like when we loaded uh, bitmap images, except uh, we can just load here onto a surface. So let's go ahead and kind of follow along the example here and continue forward with our program here. So I'll add some comments, set up and initialize the SDL2 image library with our supported formats. And then let's go ahead and create a surface. Again, remember that a surface is what's gonna hold our pixels and then actually load up something into this surface here. IMG load. And then let's go ahead and create an images directory and we need some PNG image. So I'm gonna look for you know Super Mario or something, something on the Creative Commons license. And let's go ahead and um, look at something reasonable here. And this looks like something that we have here. And I just want to make sure that it's a, a PNG image. And maybe that it's actually a little bit smaller here. Just so it'll fit in our window. Actually, let's take a look at this one just for old memory's sake here. Somebody's Super Nintendo here. I'm going to save this. And I'll go ahead and create my images directory here. And let's just call this Mario PNG. All right, so now we have an image available. It's in our images directory, and we'll go ahead and take a look at it. Perfect. Okay, so we can also do some additional uh, error checking. I'm gonna go ahead and add that in here, uh, just to show you the best practice. So if the image was not loaded, means the pointer is null, image not loaded. And then you'll want to handle the error as always. So again, there's a lot of code here because this is a C-based library. You can think about wrapping it if you're using C++ and building your own abstractions, uh, and that's not a bad idea. Okay, so now that we've got everything on a surface, we probably want to be able to render this uh, out to the screen. And let's check if we've made any errors here. And so far, let's go ahead and render this to a rectangle. And the easiest way to do this will be to just create a texture, uh, which we have previously done. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a SDL uh, texture. And I'll call this our PNG. And what we wanna do from this uh, texture is just create a texture from our surface. We have SDL, create texture, from surface, we have our render that it's gonna be drawing on, which is just called uh, render. So render here. And then the actual uh, surface, which is our image that we loaded. And those are our two parameters. Okay. And before I forget, uh, let me also make sure that uh, we go ahead and uh, free our surface, which is the image. Free our PNG image surface. And we also need to um, destroy our texture. And destroy our texture. STL, destroy texture. And this is whatever our uh, texture name was just our PNG. Okay, and then what can we do? Well, we can actually just render our texture to the screen, um, and that would be sort of the easiest um, way to, to handle this here. So let's go ahead and just do that. STL, render copy, this is to our render, uh, our PNG, and the size null, null here. So let's see what we've got here. I try to compile this, no mistakes here. And if I try to run this and bring it in, you'll see that we have a PNG image here. Of course, we could do this to a rectangle, 
again, uh, we could use our uh, same render copy function and supply a, a rectangle here as the destination. Um, otherwise, we just draw it out here. So there you have it. That's how to use the uh, SDL uh, image library and be able to load images that are not just bitmaps at this time. Again, this is important because PNGs, for instance, have a alpha component and you might want to take advantage of that. Otherwise, you can look at a previous lesson where you have to use a color keying technique. I just want to dig a little bit further into the documentation here uh, of our images just to show you that some of these other functions you're going to notice this underscore rw and we haven't talked about that in this series to date uh, if you're watching these lessons in order so we want to see what's going on there are some other helpful functions here for just checking the data type and so on but what is underscore rw and why should i maybe want to use this uh, instead well, just reading through the uh, documentation, you can see that there's different formats, but it's saying that using SDL RW ops is not covered here, but they enable you to load from almost any source. OK, so what does any source mean here? Well, one source could be our actual hard disk. And if I look at the source code, we loaded up this Mario image from our hard disk. So if I go ahead and do a little bit of uh, investigation here on just what SDL underscore RW uh, ops is, let's go ahead and um, take a look here. Now this is from the uh, old documentation, but it will uh, do the trick here. Um, basically, this is a structure to abstract around IO. So let's say that you wanted to load from a USB drive that you had just plugged into your machine, or perhaps a uh, another file system that you're connected to over a network, some network drive. The idea is that you could use this uh, read-write um, I.O. interface to handle those operations. So most folks are just going to be ignoring this, but you could use this abstraction if you want to have different uh, interfaces from when you're reading and writing. So it's useful to know that this is available. This is sort of low level stuff in SDL2, and it's nice that this is provided. Again, this might be super useful if you're developing for different platforms other than the desktop or Linux machine like I have here. All right, folks, so let me go ahead and run this one more time because I think this is a cool image uh, to end on. And you can see the uh, library working here. This brings back a lot of memories for me, maybe for some of you folks who had a Nintendo or a friend who had a Nintendo uh, that you got to use uh, way back in the day. Anyways, you know a little bit more now. If this has been useful, keep watching the channel, like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. And I hope you folks are all well.